Welcome again to the Fireside Tales with Indigo and all these fine gentlemen. We are uh, back. We're back again uh, to play through the Tales from the Yawning Portal uh, opening adventure, The Sunless Citadel. Definitely excited to get back into this. It's been a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, lots of stuff going on in the world of Indigo. And everyone else, uh, lots of family stuff going on, obviously. It's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all of the fathers out there. All of the one of you that might be watching. <laughs> um, uh, it's definitely been interesting. I did uh, a little bit of moving myself and all of that, so. Uh, lots of stuff going on. Anyway, uh, we're back to play some D&D. And I am excited to get back into this adventure. So the last time, just to dive right in, since it has been a while, let's just get to the fun. Uh, you guys will be able to find yourselves here in the top left corner of the map. Uh, the last time we played, we had just got done fighting a couple of goblins riding giant rats and a bugbear. Uh, it was actually a pretty tough fight. Uh, you guys uh, had a pretty interesting encounter with those guys, but made it through. Uh, you were able to kind of ransack their living quarters there a little bit. And uh, I believe you found a couple of nice items there. Yes. I do believe I was out for that session. I don't remember the rat. We definitely fought the rats, um, and we definitely got to a, some a uh, little alcove with some treasures. Um, yeah, and uh, you guys all have your tokens and everything, yeah. <clears throat> so. Um, how are you guys looking as far as um, spells and things of that nature? I'm going by what I left my sheet in. We've already taken a short rest since my hit die are gone. And we did get into a confrontation because I am quite easily damaged. Okay. I'm doing good. I am out of spell slots. Yeah, I'm pretty spent on most of my stuff too. I think we need to rest if possible. I don't think we have been awake long enough to take a long rest. Is there a hard rule on that? Uh, I mean, I There's guess no... it really comes down to GM discretion, but from what I remember, usually it's just one long rest a day. Yeah, gen I think as a general rule is that you have to do enough sort of confrontations to actually earn yourself another long rest, unless time otherwise say permit. Right. Okay. So we can definitely uh, press on from here. Um, you were talking about finding us in the top right corner. Uh, Anyone else see the map? All I see is the Tales from the Yawning Forum. That's I all I see too. All I see as well. Oh, geez, I'm sorry. It would be Same. super helpful if I moved you guys there. It's been a while, guys. And uh, get back in the, in the DM seat here. Uh, so it's uh, the top left corner of the Grove map. You guys should be on that now. My apologies again. I'm there. Uh, Found me. Okay. And so you guys do see um, a tunnel going off this way as well as this entrance here uh, that you came in Uh, 
did you uh, have a particular direction that uh, you'd like to go in this for? So he said we came from the south, so we go north, right? Well, there were some other, uh, in that room you just came out of, you were attacked uh, in this room to the south of you. And then you kind of, the, the battle kind of spilled into here uh, because the bugbear attacked you from this location. And then you guys kind of did your exploration thing here. So picking up from that moment, uh, back in the other room, uh, there were a couple of doors in that room that you had noticed. So there's definitely other ways to go. Um, but there is definitely, um, it looks like just a crevice uh, almost just a little niche in the back wall where you were, you, you just kind of could tell, you know, being a dwarf by the way that it's formed there, that there's actually a passage going on from there. So you want to go north or south? Good. Mm -hmm. uh, we could always move back. Um, make sure nothing's following us and then on top of that just check on see if we missed anything don't want to be surprised from behind what is that thing which thing that's Erky the thing that's not crossed out that's oh, Erky okay did you ever forget who Erky was <laughs> how many, how many oh, weeks oh. Been since we played this game I just saw the token and was like what is that <sighs> It's just a little gnome. I play with the thing usually zoomed out. Now that I zoom closer, I can see his face. Let me see. What uh, languages Alert speaks here? Okay. You see him kind of looking over this tunnel here um, and he kind of looks over towards you and cry back he says oh d didn't, you, didn't you say you were from uh, well you know way down there uh, from the underdark yes I am is that the tunnel I came through you see it kind of shivers a little bit and uh, he kind of looks back towards it again and says oh, well, it, it says uh, th there's some goblin scratching here it, it says beware the deep dark do, do you think this goes down there I would believe it, it would, and I would advise against it for now. Deep dark. Is, is the tree where we what is the deep the dark? Is well, I don't know for, for sure, but it sounds like maybe it's it, something like the Underdark. Well, the Underdark is miles below the surface. I don't think we've gone that far yet. Um, There's no telling. We've been down here for some time. I don't, I don't really like the look of it. I mean, do y'all think the tree is down there? Um, anybody else want to do an investigation or check out the passageway at all? The bottom passageway, right? Uh, I'm gonna like peek out over the side and try and see if I can see anything. Okay. Um, hey, I've got a I've got a question, guys. Yes, sir. For a tool, if that truly leads to the underdark, would it be better to seal that tunnel? I'm not sure. I do not know of the Underdark. Only stories. I 
don't know anything about it, but our friend here says it's pretty bad, and it's at R6. And I don't think I've ever heard a good story about the Underdark. There are no good stories of the Underdark. Well, with your previous experience, would it behoove you to say that we should seal that tunnel, or leave it open? The uh, thing is, if we want to go down there, should we seal it? And if we seal it where we can move it, they can move it from the other end more. So. Well, sure enough. Maybe we should just move along then. Uh, I, I, I think that we should seal it after we come through back, on our way back, just just so nothing can come, come in to this place anymore. Potentially, I guess it's something we can discuss on the way back when we're done. It sounds like a plan. It's just even the stories I've heard send shivers down a man's spine, so I just thought it best maybe to take care of it beforehand, but I understand Dell's point. So, I've been debating whether or not I want to <clears throat> use Gog and uh, Bresnik for this. And let them fall behind. I'm going to have them keep up for now, I guess. Uh, so you see, uh, and Gok just kind of looks along like, How can we go already? God. Okay, um... Where, where do you, you think we should go? Well, I don't want to go to any underdog right now. South it is. So, in, I guess I think I was gone for that session, but we already fought in this room? Yeah, we killed some goblins at, who were riding rats. Can anybody determine if there are any traps in the room? Oh, no. um, I don't know if uh, there was a chance to do that. If anybody did afterwards. But we uh, do we'll have on. a resident dwarven rogue. Let's see what all Brasnik says about that. I'm imagining this door to the east here is the way we gotta go, right? Okay. That one's really good. Uh, yeah, so Bresnik, uh, does, uh, check that door. After uh, listening at it for a moment, he kind of uh, turns back and uh, he says, it sounds like some activity in there. That didn't sound like Raznik at all, but that's okay. <laughs> you guys think we should go through? We can't stay here. He heads over to this door. And he's going to uh, check that one out as well. Well, this one sounds nice and quiet. I didn't sound like Brasnik either, sorry. <laughs> so he said there's activity on the side of this door. Can I do a perception check to determine what, or we peek under the door and see if I can't get eye line, eye line of sight? Is there um, enough room under the door to peek? Not really. The doors of this place are definitely ancient, um, kind of wood. Um, a lot of times, you know, you have to kind of force them open uh, because of the settling uh, of this place into the ground. Uh, 
Um, go ahead and so, roll a uh, perception check. You can try and listen at the door. Oof. Nope. <laughs> Um, you, yeah, it's kind of muffled. Uh, you, it sounds like something, but you can't really tell at all what's going on back there. Sounds safe, huh? Um, yeah, yeah, you could definitely say that. I don't know about safe. I, I, I can I can barely hear what you heard, Grybrett. Or, not, or not Grybrett, but what Brasnik found. But beyond that, I can't really determine anything. It's just it, what... He says it's true. We've got a quiet door and an active door. We have a choice to make. I still have a little in me to punch anything. But what does everyone else say? I always trust active. I don't feel well. I can... I can... I don't feel we'll get a chance to get a break anytime soon with the potential of them coming upon us, so I'm down to see if it's a... Never trust the twipe, the quiet when you're underground. <laughs> yeah, I think everything's quiet when you're that deep. Um, you, uh, right after you say this, you hear a as the door down here next to Brosnick swings open. Oh god damn it. Decision made for us. <laughs> what do we see in the doorway? Um, it was Brasnick opening the door. He kind of peeks down there a little bit. Looks clear this way. Does it look like it's a sealed room or a tunnel? See him disappear through the door. Do you want to try that door up there? Oh, I'm waiting for the group. I guess if Brasnick's checking out the quiet door, I'm not gonna just go without him. Okay, you guys pause for Wait a to moment. See what he's dead. Just uh, in, just kind of wondering what the hell Brasnick's up to. He comes back into uh, the room there, and he says, "Looks like part of this is just goes into the rift. It's open, broken. I don't know what's down there. Could be empty. Could be something." I guess we make a choice. We can check yep. what's behind this. But I guess we check both doors and then... If, I mean, obviously nothing's going to come at us from this way. If we check the door and there's something to take care of, we can then explore both rooms at our left. We could do it the old dwarven way. Flip a coin. I'm down, I guess. Yeah. We can, we can always just roll a d22. What do you guys want to do? Okay. Uh, I'm going to take out a copper piece. Okay. And I'll flip the back piece. Without, without designating which one is which, I'm just going to flip the copper piece. <laughs> It lands on the ground and everyone just like awkwardly looks at each other like, wait, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> it's a hat. Right. Heads is no south. It. Heads is south. Is that what's going on here? Uh, when I heard nobody designate the coin, I was, I was pretty much making it to see what Ian was going to do. But I mean, I'll, I'll go ahead and pull this door open. <laughs> Alright, you can finally just sit with a sigh of frustration, opens up the door in front of him. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, put you in there so you can see what's going on within your uh, range of vision there. Uh, you see uh, two rows of dragon-carved marble columns 
marching the length of the hall, most completely covered in the luminescent fungus. The cobbled floor is cracked and stained, and on it sit many small wooden tables. The contents on the tables include mortars and pestles, small tools, bowls filled with crushed leaves, chopped fungus stalks, and other plant specimens. The many doors leading off of this hall are partly open. Looks to be like some sort of a laboratory. Does it look like anyone's noticed me opening the door? Not as of yet. Uh, go ahead and uh, roll a stealth feat or a check. Okay. God, man, six is both times. Uh, that was a one. Well done. And this is why I left D&D. So, okay. Um, so you uh, you think you're doing okay? Um, as you're stepping into the room. Uh, the, the door actually starts to backswing a little bit, and as it does, you, you like go to try and stop it, but right as you your hand is about to touch it, it gives off a loud squeak. And then a few seconds later, you hear, Okay, back to the door. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, well, um. I think they know we're here. Sorry. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna stand. I'm gonna stand on one side of the door and wait for something to come in so I can smash. Pretty much, yeah. I'm gonna ready in action first. I guess if something comes to investigate the, the sound of the door, if it comes to the door. I prepare the bet. I prepare my bear trap on a rope. Okay. All right. Um, that being the case. You guys do hear what sounds like some commotion from the other side of the doorway, and it's uh, Grybeck and Red Tool and Gok uh, can hear Goblin being spoken and shouted, and it sounds like running feet. I don't like that. Pick back to the door. You're gonna go through? Okay, I'm gonna use my action to uh, take the dodge action and step through the door. Okay. Uh, everybody go ahead and grab your tokens and roll initiative. I didn't like when I heard things running away. <laughs> As you step oh, back shit. through, you see what looks like a bunch of uh, those goblin commoners um, running through this laboratory, and they seem to be heading towards this doorway over here. You do see two of the bigger goblins, uh, the regular fighters, uh, standing, looking like they are not really wanting a fight, but they will definitely take one uh, to protect their, their tribe. That I'm going to go ahead and just keep. So they look like they're just holding position. Uh, the two in the doorways, yeah. Second, let me get some initiative here. And I feel like I haven't done this in forever. Erk, he's ready. Right. Do I have a moment to say anything, or do we have to take initiative now? Damn, Ricky's super ready. Uh, yeah, you can say something. I would, I would tell Gok, because you said it looks like they're just holding their positions. Mm -hmm. So I would tell Gok to tell him if they stand down, no one will be hurt. Okay. So I guess on his turn, if he's able to try to persuade them or talk to them. Alright, we have a couple of other uh, goblin speakers here, right? I know. I only know. Or Gog. Okay. 
I was only aware of God, but I guess if anyone else, because they'll hear me say it to him in common, I'm going to shout it to the door, so I guess anybody that speaks. So, it looks like... Mr. Oh yeah, I do speak Goblin. Yep. As does Ratul, I believe. Or is it or Orcs have their own language? Orcs have their own language. We do not share a language Goblins. Okay. All right, well... And no, I do not speak Goblin either. Erky does. Elijah, what do you, what'd you like to do with that fabulous 21 you got there? Uh, I'm gonna try and stealthily move through the door. Or move up and peek in. Okay. Perception, I assume? So that is what you see. Looks like, like I said, a bunch of those commoners seem to be running away from you. They're heading towards this door here. And then there's a couple of these bigger, meaner looking ones that are, seem to be ready for a fight. At least a holding action. I'm going to not go through the door and make room for my, uh, my other close range fighting friend. Okay. Um, and I'm going to hold an action to cast a uh, spell just in case. I can't really like, cast like a, uh, uh, which, which, which spell do I have? Sorry, it's been all. Uh, to cast a frostbite if any of them start attacking any of my friends. Okay. Sounds good. Um, all right. So, Erky kind of uh, comes up and he does actually step through and uh, he steps in front of you, Yin Yang, and uh, he starts yelling out uh, in the goblin language and he's like holding up his hand like in a placating sort of a way. Um, seems like he uh, is trying to convince them that, you know, the, the party won't hurt them. What, what was it that you uh, wanted Gok to say, if they give up or whatever? Yeah, if they stand down, no harm would come to them. Okay. Alright. So Erky uh, delivers this message at uh, 20, and you see uh, the, the goblins, the two bigger, meaner ones, seem to be kind of... Uh, they're, they're holding their bows, and they're, they're kind of looking at Erky, but they're also kind of looking at each other, and then kind of looking at the the, the commoners as they're attempting to flee. They seem to be uh, unsure. So. I mean, if Erky has chance to ask me to say anything else on top of that, be like, chances are the ones that ran here are the ones we let go before. It's quite possible. Definitely has been a little bit of time now. And uh, things do happen in the old city. So, Ratul. Like to do I am going to move up a little bit and hold my action to... Can I hold my action to move? Uh, yeah. Where do you... What kind of movement? I would like to hold my action to move inside the room if I hear the sound of both strings being snapped. And that's it for me. That's it for now. Okay. Uh, yin Yang. So these goblins definitely seem to be, uh, they, they look like they're hesitating, but they have not uh, lowered their weapons yet. Okay, um, I guess I'll just step up next to Erky here and kind of set my staff on the ground to show that I, um, like I'm in line with what he said. And I'll, get, I'll pretty much just hold my action. If they attack, I'll throw a dart. 
Okay. I guess I pretty much I have a hand, I have one hand setting the staff down in the air and the other hand on my weight on my waist. If they attack, I t I'll react. Okay. And the very tense standoff developing here. Right back. All right, I'm gonna move into the room. Okay. So you step in and you see what is developing here. See, uh, as I've stated, uh, the, the commoners look like they're trying to just get out of there. And then these other goblins are looking uh, very nervous. Uh, you, you see them actually kind of scowl a little bit uh, when you step into the room seeing one of the hated dwarves. Yeah, I'm going to break uh, tr with tradition. I'm just going to uh, run forward and smack the one in the head with my hammer. <laughs> Go ahead and do that, sir. What? <laughs> 21 is definitely going to hit that guy. As you run forward, you see, uh, you know, the hesitation is there. You quickly take advantage of that. Um, no, no goblin is a, a good goblin in a dwarf size. As <laughs> so you swing your hammer down, you see the... Uh, uh, the hesitation turned to confusion and then turned to terror as the hammer slams into its face and then concaves most of its head and down towards its shoulders. Uh, you see the other goblins immediately just start screaming in panic. And uh, this last one uh, of the fighter goblins looks like he's uh, pulling up his bow and getting ready to attack. I'm just going to turn back to the, the party and be like, why are you guys scared of them? Not understanding you guys were ready in your actions. I just thought you guys were scared of them. I, I was... we were trying not to hurt anyone. We've been underground fighting goblins for like a, a week and you're worried about hurting them, just a rant. We've only had to because they've attacked us. All right, I'm going to shake the blood off my hammer and be like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, any uh, bonus action or anything else for you, sir? No, I'm good. All right. Yeah, I'm pretty much okay. Oh, so much for that. <laughs> it was a good effort. It was a good effort. I, I liked the intention there. That was definitely it. So, uh, at, at seven, uh, you see all of these goblins definitely are going to try and the heck out of here. Uh, you see um, a bunch of them escape through this doorway. A couple of them are kind of straggling behind. Uh, they definitely all seem to be running TF out of here. Uh, you see this one also moving this way, but he actually does <clears throat> quite bravely for a goblin, kind of hold his position to help these stragglers here. And he is going to take a shot at that terrible dwarf. Ooh, does an 18 hit, sir? No, it doesn't. Oof, that defense. It's too real. Uh, so as you raise up, uh, you see the shot coming in, you kind of raise up your shield, easily deflect it as it bounces uh, over Erky's head and off the wall. You just kind of tighten your grip on your hammer and grimace at him. Uh, can I trigger my held action since I just heard a bowstring snap? Of course. Moving inside. The big orc charges into the room on hearing the weapon fire. And the big ore can't get very much further because there are people in the way. Uh, you can do, uh, it's difficult whenever there's a player, so it's just uh, 10 feet from that square. I think I have enough movement for that then. Okay. You can make and, it through there. Yep, I believe that's all my movement for my held action. Yes, sir. All right. So, we are at 
the top of the order with the lard row. Uh, you definitely heard a bowstring uh, snap, and then you saw the big orc rush through the doorway. I'm gonna come through. Oops, 10 feet to there. Looks like this one goblin's here holding guard. Waiting for the rest of his kinfolk to try and get away. Can I move through ally squares? Yeah, it's just gonna be a difficult terrain. Okay. I can't get okay, so I'm actually kind of stuck here. I can't see anything, so I guess I hold my action to attack anything or I, any cast spell on any enemies I see. Okay, that does sound good, sir. Am I in the corner? Yay! It's a uh, brass neck. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Doing all right. I'm sorry. I'm late. I've got. Caught up in an argument. Oh, it's all right, man. Nobody wants to do that. It wasn't actually like me arguing with someone. They're just watching an argument, and it was just so entertaining that I lost track of time. <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes that's definitely worth it. A little popcorn will make a moment better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. What has happened so far is uh, we uh, came back into this uh, room here where you guys had fought uh, with Dern. Um, after some debate over which door to check out, uh, we decided to go into the, the room uh, that most of the party is in at the moment. Uh, they encountered some goblins there and uh, seemed to be routing them quickly from the premises. They do seem to be fleeing through a particular doorway. Um, who knows what the results of that might be? Who they might be going to uh, talk to? Let's see what happens. So that kind of okay. catches up. Uh, go ahead and grab your token. It's right here, sir. And uh, roll initiative. We'll get you in there. Man, look at all of these twenties. All right, so uh, we will be getting you in on the uh, next round. Mm -hmm. uh, so Erky uh, kind of yells out uh, in Goblin again uh, to hold on, but realizing that it's a lost cause in 15, 20, 25. You see him start uh, kind of moving through the room here. And uh, he's kind of holding up his shield kind of bravely making his way through the room, but he kind of stops there and seems to be waiting to see if this goblin tries to advance or anything like that. That's right, we got all this gear back, didn't we? Good. So, we're at open. The way is open ahead of you, sir. Yes, yes it is. Just need to check my movement. Okay. Moving up here and taking an action to dodge. Okay. And that's it. Uh, go ahead and roll a uh, perception check. Uh, you just kind of happened to get a quick glance of that room uh, that you're standing next to, and it looks like uh, um, some sort of a uh, repair or a tailoring facility. Looks like uh, some dirty goblin armor um, laying on the table. Looks like there was a 
some iron needles and corn. Looked like something, you know, some kind of a repair process seemed to be happening when uh, they were interrupted and started fleeing. Okay. Is that the end of your turn, sir? Yes, it is. All right. In you. <laughs> kind of just lets his arm fall slack to his side. <laughs> so much. Grabs the staff, <laughs> runs forward. The one time the guy that likes to fight doesn't try to fight. You know, I'm, I'm proud of you. I really am. Thirty feet. Um, and he looks like he's gonna shoot me. Uh, I mean, he is completely terrified right now at this human who seems to be just running full on straight at him in nothing but clothing, and looks intent upon murdering his face. Uh, he, he definitely seems like he is uh, more terrified than angry, but he uh, seems like he is ready to attack you. I'm feeling particularly peaceful today. I know he doesn't understand it, but I'll reach my hand out and be like, give me your weapon. <laughs> okay. Is that the end of your turn, sir? I mean, I don't know if he'll understand me or if I could attempt to insinuate a way to be like, you can drop that or give it here. He, he's definitely, he looks at your hand and then he looks back up at you and looks at your hand and looks back up at you and it just seems utterly confused. I point at his weapon in his hand. Okay. If he doesn't get it at that point, I guess that is my turn trying to persuade him to give me his weapon. Okay. Uh, Grybeck. You see this exchange happening across the room. All right, I'll use a bonus action to talk. And be like, do you want to make friends with that one, Mr. Gay? Uh, Intel. We don't know what's ahead. He might. All right, so I'm going to walk up uh, 25. And... I'll just hold uh, Sacred Flame if that goblin attacks. I'll let Mr. Yang try to make a friend. Okay. Mr. Yang, I appreciate you for that. So, at seven, you see these two goblins immediately disappear through this door. Um, and you still hear the kind of receding feet of others that disappear into the citadel until you're left with this one goblin who definitely does not seem to be happy about your presence. You see him actually uh, start back backing away from you and he does take a step away from you towards this doorway, still holding his bow out and not handing it over to you. But he I'm, gonna try, I'm gonna try to grab him when he runs if, if my opportunity attack then. Okay, so he does actually start to pivot, like, you know, he's, he's kind of watching you, and as he steps away, you see him just, <laughs> it's like, just turns and starts to run. And I said, it's like, I get an opportunity attack when he tried to step away, so I was gonna grapple him. Okay, go for it. I guess athletics versus acrobatics, right? Go for it. Yeah. Oh no. No. Okay. God, I haven't rolled above a, si a six all night. So as you uh, he used to go to reach out for him, and uh, he actually is able to just quickly kind of squirrel his shoulder out of the way as you go to grab for him, and he uh, quickly disappears through this doorway. Well, I mean, I don't know if Grybeck, so he didn't attack, so I guess not. I could just be like Grybeck, but it's... Um, go ahead and roll that uh, Sacred Flame. Ooh, okay. 
I mean, if you want to, you don't have to. I was holding my action for an attack. If they had attacked, would it, could I have expended it there when he tried running away, or not? Um. Yeah, that's fair. So I just need a DC 11 deck save. Okay. Oof. <laughs> okay. And what were you going to do there, uh, Elardra? Just want to see how this plays out. Okay. This got one, this poor got one. Hmm. Okay, uh, so you, uh, you cast your spell as he tries to get away, and you see um, part of the doorway right where the goblin was moments ago just uh, kind of rhyme over with ice crystals as he's barely able to uh, get away from the druidic magic. Um, but all of a sudden, just as he's disappearing through the doorway, you see this flash of radiant energy and you hear a and then a crash as the goblin kind of stumbles across the room after taking the damage. And that will take us to the top of the order. Well, I tried. Did. We are not good at making friends. Especially when you smash him in the face with a hammer. Smash him with a hammer that kind of puts a dent in things. <laughs> puts, puts a damper on the friendship status. I'm talk I was talking all, all uh, sessions. We have not made one friend yet. <laughs> you made friends with Erky and uh, Meepo and a dragon. Yeah, I was saying we had a dragon watch us while we slept overnight and didn't eat us. That is true. I take that back. And may have started a kobold uprising. We'll see. Maybe. Crossing fingers. You never know what old Meepo's up to. Okay. Um, Alardra, what would you like to do, sir? Um, I'm gonna keep moving through the room. Okay. So, as I don't see anything, keep moving. I'm gonna peek in any of the doorways as you're going through. Um, I guess I, the path I took, I could see into some of the rooms. I, I don't see anything, do I? Uh, roll a perception check, since you're just kind of passing by. Okay. Uh, you're able to kind of get a quick peek into uh, this room here as you're going by. Let's see. Do I see uh, anything that's that really catches my eye? Yeah, uh, you uh, you can s sort of like through the doorway as you're going through, you can see that there is a, uh, it's kind of a crude mashing, straining, and casting uh, facility uh, for creating, uh, which you would assume to be the goblin wine uh, that you've been finding throughout the dungeon. Uh, and no, you, you, I'm sorry, go ahead. No enemies or anything, just... Just like equipment. Yeah, and you can see some foot or some footprints uh, coming, uh, leading from uh, the giant barrel that's in the center of the room, uh, out of the doorway, and then across the floor, kind of fading as each step goes. Seen uh, a couple of those goblins seem to be in the process of um, squashing something in the mashing tin. Is that the one made from bones or something? Uh, no, that was the elf pudding that you had found earlier. Got it. This is the, uh, you've found a couple of flasks and stuff like that filled with goblin wine. And that, this is quite possibly um, the source of that. I'm gonna hold my action to see if, if anything, like, comes out or does anything I want to respond, but I don't, I'm not, I'm kind of being careful here. Okay. Absolutely, sir. So, Brasnick, what's up, buddy? Seems things are going. 
guess I'll enter the room with everybody else. Yeah. Take a bone back in the dash, or I can actually get into the room. Okay. There you go. That should be 35 feet. Yeah. Got 15 feet left. Uh, right there. And be like, so what's the plan, guys? Uh, shouldn't we be going down the sort of rocky cave entrance over there? Or was there nothing that Goblin's kind of fled in a doorway to the northeast. But I don't know where it leads or how far. You're talking about the uh, the other pathway that was leading off the chamber you were in? Uh, okay, right there. Um, uh, Brasnick, were you talking about the other uh, pathway that was leading off the chamber? Yeah, in, 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 in this room back. In the bugbear room. Where fought the bugbear. Um, Erky had found some, uh, some goblin markings on the wall. Uh, around the corner uh, in that passageway that said uh, beware deep dark and the party decided that the underdark was probably not something they wanted to go investigate at this time should we though if like going deep towards the entire point to get to uh, our main event I feel like especially since that's where the bugbear came from and everything I missed the, the, the session back that time. I was figuring the Underdark, the tree wasn't there. Maybe it was just further. In. This does seem to be uh, worth exploring this level here. I think it's important. I like clearing levels before we go for it. Just make... Okay. There definitely was a discussion about what to do about that tunnel after uh, you're done exploring this little section here. So. All right. Uh, I guess... I'll use my action to finish the dashing. Okay. Go ahead and roll a perception check. A perception check? Yes, sir. Eat. Oof. Okay. You definitely can tell that there's uh, you know some doorways uh, to either side of you. You can't really tell too much what's uh, in either of those rooms. It does look like there's uh, four other doors in this room, and uh, I believe it was Yin Yang had said that the uh, goblins seem to be disappearing through this door here. All right. Well, wait, which door again? Can you ping it? This one here. Use my last action to dash that way and finish the door. So yeah, there's still threats around. Well, there's still that one goblin that you had to deal with there. Uh, I thought we heard Grybeck kill him when he ran. Uh, no, I, no, I saved him for you. See Erky kind of move over to here, kind of peek his head in here. For a tool. Okay, okay. Uh, if I go across the square with a table on it, would that be considered a difficult terrain? Uh, I mean, it sort of should, I suppose, but not really. You're fine. I let Yin Yang do it, so I'll let you do it. All right, moving here and moving into here. Dodging. Okay. So you see this goblin kind of laying uh, up against uh, this table that's here. Um, as you enter the room, You see that it seems to be some sort of a rough barracks. Uh, you see 16 uh, small pallets of matted fur uh, covering the floor. Uh, two of the pallets, uh, oh, never mind, that last part. 
Um, it, it looks like this guy's kind of crashed up against the wall here. He kind of tumbled into uh, some of the sleeping mats there. Seems to be trying to uh, extricate himself from those at the moment. Ah. Noted and end of my turn. No bear trap to the face? Nope, using action to dodge. Okay. Yin yang. There's still a chance here, buddy. Alright. And this time I'm just gonna try to take his weapon from his hand. <laughs> okay. Roll in uh, acrobatics or athletics check at your leisure, sir. Nice. You, Try as he's them. trying to extricate himself from the, this, this tumble of blankets, you're easily able to walk up and just snatch, actually just kick his bow out of the way and kind of clatters across the room over here. And I'll put my staff in the, in the slot on my back. Okay. And be like, okay, I need someone that can talk to this thing. Uh, as you say this, he kind of like just, you see this huddled mass kind of, it's like a, a lump under a blanket just kind of stops moving. And then you slow, slowly see like the blanket peel back and you see these big like scared eyes kind of like looking out from under this blanket. There's a baby goblin. No, he's just very sheepish and scared right now. Oh, okay. I mean, that's my turn. I'm not going to hit him. I can't talk to him. i got to wait for somebody to talk to him for me. Okay. Uh, Greyback. You speak. Okay, I'll go into the room and I'll talk. Alright. No, not that room. It's not the right room. Actually, I won't. <laughs> as far as I can go. You can get to there, into the doorway. Oh, okay. Miscounted. Alright, what do you want to ask this poor sheepish goblin? Just to pretty much find out the layout of what's ahead. If you, if you, you can get quite an advantage against things when you know the land. Alright, I will talk to the goblin asking for any information in the next few rooms that he might know. Um, I promise I won't smash him the hammer like I did his brother. And uh, just try to convince him to talk to... Uh. Okay. Uh, you, you see him, he's kind of huddled there. He was like looking up in fear at the big orc and, and the human. But when he sees you, you see him kind of like grow hostile again. He says, Die, dwarf scum! I better not kill you! So he says he likes us, and he's really mad at the orc. <laughs> Why would he be mad at Ratul? He didn't do anything. I can't explain it, but uh. They seem I, to get angry when they see you. Ah, uh, you're imagining that. Um, I'll ask him if he has any intentions to help us, and then if he st if he says anything, I'm just gonna walk away. And if he says anything negative. Okay. Uh, he, he pretty much just starts uh, stringing a, a list of profanities at you. And you guys watch as I just go, whoop. <laughs> He's resisting the urge to hammer him in the face, I think. Yes, I resisted that. Good job. I'm proud of you too. <laughs> That's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you see this goblin, uh, he, he's kind of like looking, uh, he seems to be looking at this door here very fondly. It, it, he's like quickly kind of looks at it and then looks away again. Uh, he he Don't almost do it. seems like he's trying to inch that way a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to look down at him. Don't do it. He, he kind of like freezes uh, when you do that. And he just starts uh, talking at you really fast. Um, Greyback, you do hear him say... Um, you know, something about not killing the goblins, already killed Dern, and uh, Belak. Something about Belak. Ooh, he said something about a Belak. Is that the druid? That is the druid. Yes, it is. 
Maybe he knows more than he was willing to tell me. Maybe our Erky should give it a try. We all know goblins love gnomes. Oh, we also have a goblin that speaks goblin. Yeah, that. Yeah, uh, but it's Guck. That goblin's back in the other room. Erky does kind of like pop up for a second. Um, and he turns back and he says, well, he, he said Belak is through there. And as he's kind of turning away, um, Brasnik, Grybeck, and Olardro roll perception checks. Oof. Wow. Just, just the first one, sorry. Okay. I perceive all things. Grybeck, you are understanding the universe right now. So you do see um, this almost orangish, reddish glow behind Erky for just a second. And then all of a sudden you hear him, Whoa! and he disappears through the doorway. Whoops, something got the gnome. Really? Whoops, this, whoops is all <laughs> That's all I saw was some light, and all of a sudden he went flying into the room. I mean, I advise we go after him. He's been nice. And he's not a goblin. It's outside of my initiative, but can I run in there? Uh, nope. You just happen to, uh, to see this happen. Uh, you had to roll above a 20 to, get, to see the light and you know, see what anything about what grabbed him. So. Uh, at uh, 21, a large row. Um, seeing as my friends have moved forward, I'm going to try and meet up with them. I walk in here, and first thing I say is, where did, uh, where'd he go? Did you not see your key get taken? Oh. Uh, you, you definitely, with the 16, you guys definitely did uh, hear him, you know, cry out. Um, you guys would have seen him uh, disappear through the doorway, but uh, you wouldn't have seen any of the, the light thing. What, 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 what happened to, to, to Erky? I don't know. We're in the other room. A light grabbed him. Wait, I thought it was in this room. We're out of character. This is, it's this room that happened, right? No, it was down here. Where? Oh, wrong room. Okay. Sorry, this is the room I was in then. Okay. So as you uh, enter into that room, uh, trying to see where it is that he went to, you see that the room itself is empty, uh, but there is a uh, caved-in back wall. It looks like some sort of... A natural rift. It doesn't seem like it is uh, been broken by being some kind of sort of beings interference. A hole. There's a rift in this room over here. It it's weird looking. It's unnatural. I'm, I'm gonna like. Say this fairly loudly. Sounds fun. Move out of the doorway using a dash and uh, wait for my friends. Brasnik. Yeah. Seems to be a mystery up ahead of you to the right. And yeah. Just like when Meepo got taken, I run in. Okay! <laughs> Okay. It's even our kid's name, whatever. Uh, that was 20 feet of movement. I see the back wall, there's no... I'll use the dash action to keep going. So that was 20 feet, still got 30 feet left. Go. Okay. So as you get thing. to there, you definitely see... Uh, go ahead and roll a... Uh, investigate... No, a perception check. Perception check. Using your... Uh, your dwarven knowledge of 
earth to those. Oh, is this a stonework? There's another. It is a stonework. Okay, so then there's another two to that. Another push to the sleep. On the 16? Yeah. So 18. For stone cutting. I'm not on the 22, so it's a, it's a 24. Oh, okay. Uh, it does look like um, this rift was created uh, possibly when uh, the citadel was settling into the earth. Uh, it doesn't look like it was tunneled or created by any sort of animal or, or man or beast or anything like that. It just seemed like as the citadel was kind of uh, sinking uh, into the earth, the second citadel it is, um, it, this, this rift just kind of naturally happened. But it does extend on uh, quite a ways to the southwest. And you do not see um, anything ahead of you. Um, you, you, you can make out what looks to be some, maybe possibly a faint glow way, way down the hallway to the southwest, but then it kind of seems to fade away very quickly. Uh, this is a long tunnel because I know Alondra's back in the room and there's a faint glow way at the back of it. If we're going to save Erky, we need to move pretty quickly, I guess. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my last action to dash forward just a bit more. I just want to peek around the corner of this. Cause it... um, all you see is, uh, is darkness at this point. Yep, still more darkness. Yeah. Use this corner for cover. Okay. Erky. Uh, you do actually hear Erky uh, call out at this point. Is it in uh, pain? Uh, uh, oh, he's, he's got me! Oh. <laughs> I don't know whether I should call it. No, I'm a rogue. I wouldn't call out. Red tool. You seem Did to I hear you. that Erky got taken? Yeah. Yes, I clearly stated if we want to catch Erky, we gotta move quickly. And I said it too, and I usually don't say anything quiet. Yeah, he's leaving on less quiet. <laughs> Alright, dashing from the room, hearing that, and going through it. Okay. And that will be all for me, since that's all my action I can take right now. Uh, you definitely uh, to see this rift as well, um, and then just a darkness. You can see Brasnik uh, just up the way a little bit ahead of you. Yin Yang, you know that this is all happening, but you have this goblin right here. Damn it, this always happens. I'm just going to punch him once and non lethally knock him out. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and roll that, sir, with advantage. Easily done. Um, as he's kind of like, you see him again, as the, the commotion starts happening, you see him, he's like half halfway to turn to bolt. And as you lash yeah. out quickly, he kind of spins up against the wall and as he slides down yeah. the wall and then falls over into the blankets. Yeah, I kind of let out the frustrated, God damn it. And then as I see him go, no, no, you don't. And then turn around and run. Use my action to attack. I have no key points left, so that's all I can do is I'm the, I'm right. How come there's no sleep symbol? Okay. And then we are at Greyback. All right, I'm gonna move down that way. Okay. And then a dash, just a second movement, right? Yep. All right, and then I'm gonna scream down. I'm coming for you, Erky. Okay. He appreciates you, sir. All right, that guy Just... is out. A large row. Well, I see all my friends running through there, so.
And I can't move any further. Or I guess that was 20 feet of movement. I'll dash, so I get 10. So you could get to here. 15, so that's 15 to get to there. So that's a total of 35, 45, 30, 40, 45, 50. as far as I can get. Okay. What would you like to do, Mr. Bresnik? You there, Quinn? Yeah, I am sorry. My brother is distracting me with conversation. <laughs> okay. Uh, do -do. All right. As you get a bonus action to that. Yeah, go for it. As you get there to there, you can see what looks to be. Uh, like some sort of a corridor uh, once uh, traveled through this rock. Um, you can see where it's been split. Uh, it goes to the north, and then uh, you can see another branch of it uh, offset to the south. So that was 15 feet of my second bonus of that section. I'm on the next 10 feet so I can see another sort of corridor that breaks away. Uh, can I still hit Erky at all? Or yeah, go ahead and roll a perception check. At a 12. Okay. Uh, you, you can sort of see what uh, appears to be some sort of a glow emanating from looks like some sort of an alcove on the head. Sorry for being friendly. Okay, um, and the, so there's another five feet to complete. The second dash action, and then just trying to catch Erky one more time for the dash action. Um, okay, I see you. The fuck is holding you? <laughs> okay. So you see the rooster? Oh, oh, Erky's in trouble. And as I'm... you come around the corner and see this creature, you see it uh, dive down on top of uh, Erky. It's kind of holding him in its coils. And you see it snap down and bite onto his midsection. You hear Erky scream out in pain. I don't know if I can see this from how far away I am. Well, actually, it might be. Is that creature, is it, like, is it literally on fire? It, it is definitely glowing. Oh, so and there may be heat getting off of it. In, yes, it, this whole room uh, seems to be giving off a, a very hot uh, presence for sure. Definitely uh, heat emanating. It does seem to be coming kind of towards that end of the chamber. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and whip out my short bow. Knock an arrow, even though I can't, actually. And yell back the uh, I guess Erky in trouble and Fire Snake because I, I don't know how echoey this tunnel. Okay. <clears throat> and that's the end of my turn. Okay. We have encountered a Fire Snake, guys. What do you think about that? Interesting. When I get up to see it. No worries. <laughs> All right, uh, so Erky on his turn. Let's see. Is he smart enough to not try animal friendship? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, does he, oh, he doesn't have any spells left. Oh, no, Erky, no. It All was right. good knowing you, Erky. It was good knowing you, Erky. He uh, feebly uh, tries to uh, swing at the fire snake uh, with his mace. 
Um, as he swings, you see the fire snakes kind of holding him. You see like sweat already that seems to be pouring off of Erky. And just the heat alone from this creature, it seems like Erky is on the verge of passing out. Uh, so, Ratul. You kind of hear uh, Brasnick yelling out down this passageway. Something about a fire snake? Sounds like something to punch. Yeah. Quite possibly. Dashing to get down there. Okay. Oh. And unfortunately, that is all my movement, so end turn for me. Okay. Uh, yeah, and you do see that, again, uh, it looks to be like there used to be some sort of a passageway here that's been split in two. Not an important feature at the moment, I'm sure, in your mind. Uh, Yin-Yang. All right. You did not hear anything about a fire snake. You were too far away. Yep. All right, so that was three, it's 15. 25. 25. 30, 35. He's maxing the dash. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, that's as far as I can get. Alright. So you see the, the wind like yin yang come rushing up behind you. Red tool takes position. I was like, what's going on? Where, where's where's Erky? Fire snake. Fire what? This way. Now that I can actually see you. Oh no, I hate snakes. Why does it always have to be snakes? <laughs> I'm the it's, motherfucking it's plane. True. It's <laughs> true. I'm what tired of saying? all these snakes in this dungeon. Right. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna run my little tiny leg. Now, these little things are like half squares. Those are actually not spaces, right? Which ones? Like there. Yeah, I mean you could just go diagonal though. So that's five feet to there. Could go there, that'd be fine. Okay, right, that's my move and my double move. All right, we're slowly making our way through. Never gonna make it. Alardro. I don't know if you're gonna get there in time to save Erky. I I heard that it was um, a fire snake, right? Yes, sir. Okay. How large is this tunnel? Like, how 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 large is it um, side to side? How wide is it? Yeah, wide. That's what I'm thinking. Sorry. Ten feet. Okay. I'm gonna attempt to. I just have to check on movement speed. Yes, this is. I'm gonna attempt to wild shape into a tiger. All right. I'm gonna move 40 feet. What type of tiger are you? Uh, Siberian. I'm gonna have to stop here. Oops, I can't do that. Here. As far as I can go. So you guys see this tiger appear behind you? I can't, I can't see. Uh, with the tiger. I can only see with my token, so. Oh. Uh, there. Let's do that for now. Okay. It's an Elydra tiger. <laughs> Alright, Brasnik.
That's weird. Are you guys have the exact same dex modifier or something? No, we don't. I don't think I have tiebreaker on. Mm. Okay. Brasnik. Oh, right there. Mm -hmm. Fire off. Since the, the creature is on top of Erky, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so. Short boat. 16? Uh, 16. Let's see. Uh, that does hit. Alright. Go ahead and roll that damage. Ouch. But still, okay. Because it's the thing. Okay. So, it, uh, it, it does hit uh, the fire snake, but it doesn't seem like it hurt it as much as it should. Oh, oh crap. Just, yeah. Some of it. I'm sad. I'm really sad that my fucking sneak attack on for a while. Uh, that was my action. Uh, bonus action. I can. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and move. I'm hoping I can squeeze, like squeeze right here, so that the wall is in view of it. It is not in view of the snake. Sure, go and, ahead and uh, take, stuff. yeah, my bonus action die hide. Okay. 16. Alright. Alright, that's my turn. Alright. It's 20 point something. Erky is feeling a little desperate here. First, he immediately takes five points of damage. And you see him weakly, just like, kind of holding his hammer, just very limply. And you see him just with the last of his strength, just kind of lash out with everything that he has left at the fire snake, desperately trying to get it to let him free. You can do it, Eric. We believe in you. Oof. Hits, hits the fire snake, uh, but it bounces off of the gleaming scales. And the fire snake hisses down at what it would like to be its dinner. Get out and invest in him getting like a, a, a morning star so you can pierce those scales. Red tool. Let me see, and yes, I do have visual. Perfect. I would like to use my my trait of aggressive. Okay. Which means that actually, I will just go ahead and link it right here to show it off, because it's been such a long time. You. Yep. You see a red tool just come streaming past you like a freaking muscly locomotive heading towards the fire snake. And I still have my main action, which I'm also going to use the dash. Okay. Right up to the big creature. Let's see. And that's going to be it for me as I just go ahead and just rush towards this thing like I'm about to drop kick it. snake you see it uh it, it definitely notes um your presence and as it like kind of you know looks at you approaching you can see the intelligence in the eyes you can tell that this is a, a thinking creature 
and it kind of, you, it almost looks like it smiles at you as it looks down at Ergi and strikes it. Oof. At Erky or at me? At Erky. Oh no. Um, you, uh, it actually uh, hits him and you can see as it strikes down at Erky that it hits this breastplate with the, the nature carvings across it. And the breastplate seems to hold against the attack. And then, oof, you see as uh, you are rushing up to it, uh, you do, as soon as you get within five feet of this creature, you f uh, feel the heat emanating off of it. Um, you just got in its face so far, right? You haven't attacked it yet? Nope, I have not attacked it yet. Okay. Um, you can definitely feel the heat emanating off of it. Um, as you do come running up, as it misses its strike, it kind of looks up at you again, and you see its tail come out from where it has it coiled around Ergi, and it lashes out at you, striking at your feet. So you, sir, are going to take uh, eight bludgeoning damage and then seven fire damage. I'm down. Oof. Oh, good God. That was a crit. Sorry about that. So, uh, it lashes you uh, right at your feet. And you uh, fall down uh, to the ground as your feet fly out from underneath you. Uh, Brasnik, you see this giant orc filled with a single swipe from the tail of this creature. Yin Yang. Alright. I have to continue my way that way. Because I saw which way Ratul went, right? Mm hmm. That was this way or this way? Oh, wait a minute. Why did it roll twice? Wait, was it only supposed to get one tail attack? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even see that first one, dude. That wasn't a crit. So you only took five, six, seven, eight, nine points. Five from bludgeoning and four from fire. Oh, then I'm still up. Oh, good, dude. I'm sorry about that. That's totally my fault. That was some good rolls, though. So how yeah. much damage did I take in total? Nine? Nine, sir. Oh, yeah, that's totally my fault. I did not see that, that first attack there. Uh, the creature gets one bite and one tail attack, which is what you guys. Okay, that's better. Totally my fault. Okay, yin yang. I'm sorry okay, about so, interrupting you, sir. No, you're fine. Um, so I saw which way he took off, so I'll follow three. And okay. that's, did he continue going straight or did he make a turn? Uh, you can start I, to as a player, see. Yeah, you can start to see the glow from this area here. Um, you can assume that he went that way. I think your vision doesn't really go that far, so. Um, but yeah, you start seeing that. And then uh, so get I get to, to there. The, yeah, you'd see Brasnik kind of crouched in the corner. Alright, and then I guess... Actually, the that. Oh! The hell is... Wow, okay. And, uh... Right there. Right there, that's as far as I can get. Okay. And I'll look at Rod Tool and be like, well, you're not looking so hot. Hey, made a fire joke. Put him bum. Here we go. Okay. Uh, Greyback, it is your turn, sir. Alright, my tiny little dwarf legs will keep running. 
Just keep pumping, man. Just keep pumping. You'll get there. No excuse. I got the same legs. <laughs> Alright, there's my run. Ah! Okay. I'm like sweating. Breathing heavily. I'm just dying. Alright, that's my turn. Is that, uh, with the dash too? Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, 50. That's the only get 50 feet. Yeah, okay. It's okay, little buddy, you'll get there. Drawbacks for being tougher than most. <laughs> the goblins sleeps. Can't have all the advantages. So what's that been, two rounds that the goblins been sleeping there? Okay. Um, a large row. I believe unconsciousness lasts an hour. Okay. Depends on the DM, but if rules is written, it's from anywhere from one hour to four. What's the Lardo going to do? Sorry, my movement is all kind of messed up on with this, so. I was here, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40. I can't, I can't see it, so I'm gonna keep moving. Uh, 10, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 35. Oh, that's not right, sorry. Uh, let me go here. Uh, I was really far behind. Did I miss a move? No, you're good, man. Okay. Well, I just moved 80 feet, and that's all I can do. I can't believe. So you come Only over. 80. One. <laughs> As the dwarf is like, fuckers. Um, so, uh, yeah, you come running into the room and uh, you see this uh, fire snake uh, holding on to uh, Erky. Uh, you can tell that Erky's pretty much done. Uh, he, he does seem to still be alive, but uh, he's looking very bad. Um, Ratu also, you can see. And an already forming welt um, across his uh, leg, almost down the whole thing, and it looks like a, a massive scorch mark radiating out from it. Brasnik, top of the order. All right. Nope, that was a lot. No. I know what I'm doing, guys. I promise. Complete faith in you. Don't worry. I've been hidden now that I've been hidden and there's more people distracting them. Go ahead. I feel like you're also gonna sneak attack this guy and get advantage on him. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Go ahead and uh, big ass tiger my way, but um, yeah, big ass tiger. But I can arch, I can archer shot. I've got a bow on it, so I'll go ahead and. Uh, but then Ratul. Yeah, there probably would be like a, some kind of a light cover here. How about the tiger over here? Bonus action to dash to get further. Okay. I'm just gonna say, you know, if I don't wanna get, he's, he's on fire, so I'm not gonna use a close. So I'll just get right there and go ahead and fire. As you pop out from around Yin Yang, you take the shot. There we go. You have advantage, you might get a crit. Oh, right, you do. Again. Nah, same oh. Alright, so that 23 definitely hits. Go ahead and roll the damage. Alright, 11 piercing damage. Okay. So again, uh, another bolt uh, sticks into it, but it doesn't seem to penetrate as much as you, you, you feel like it should have. I feel like this thing definitely seems to be, uh, I don't know, not taking as much damage as it should for some reason. Okay, Erky. You see him uh, just kind of laying there at this point as he kind of raises his mace 
you know, again towards the thing. It, it almost just kind of squeezes him. And you can just see, like, his skin is almost like crackling at this point from the intense heat radiating, radiating off of this creature. And you see him finally as his arm falls and the mace clatters across the stone. Zerky falls unconscious. Okay, we need to get him away from that thing. I have a healing potion. Alright, seeing the fact that Erky is being squeezed by this thing, time for me to squeeze back. I would like to grapple. Okay. Grappling fire. Yep. Hey, it's gonna be a new experience. Are you raging? No, I am not, so this will be straight. You definitely do grab this thing. Um, as soon as you grab a hold of it, your skin starts burning. You, you instantly see whiffs of smoke as you uh, are grappling onto this thing. Uh, you automatically take uh, 1d6 points of damage. Oh no. Oof. <laughs> Only one, sir. Half. <laughs> One. So as your skin is sizzling, you grab a hold of this thing. How are you going to grapple it? I'm going to grab it by its throat. Okay. So you're the palm of your hand. You can feel the fire. You can feel, you can see the little tendrils of smoke curling out from between your fingers as you're holding this thing. I just grip my teeth just grip my teeth, my tuck's just protruding as I just grip my big meaty hand into his into the bottom of his neck and then, if I can pull him off Erky okay, you could do that with a bonus action I do that with a bonus action as I just do take my other hand and just basically uncoil its coils alright um so so, what's your uh, strength uh, modifier, your bonus? Plus four. Okay, so I'm going to give you four points of damage for that. Just on the face of it. Don't forget, you can move the grappled creature at half speed. What am I doing? That's not Wait, right. so I take four points of higher damage? No. I... It takes four points from uh, your strength modifier. <laughs> I don't even need a bunch and I'm just crushing it to death with my grip. Very Herculean. So, uh, how are you going to try and throw it? Once I get uncoiled from Erky, I just basically just twist my hip look behind me towards where the tiger is and just chuck it at the wall. Okay, I'm going to roll to see if it drops our key. Oof, it definitely does. You seem to have completely uh, shocked this creature uh, by grabbing it around a throat. You can see it actually starts thrashing, uh, kind of very snake-like indeed. Um, it, as it does so, it seems to uh, drop Erky. You see Erky kind of uh, crash against uh, the wall over here and from that crevice back there you can see that this is where the source of the glow is um, it seems to be some sort of um, a crack in the earth uh, and you can actually see uh, the glow comes from there and seems to be extremely hot coming out of there it might even be some sort of connection to an underground lava um, pool or flow of some kind, you're not really sure. Noted, and I'm, like I said, taking the snake, chucking it this way. Okay. I roll a, uh, athletics. Yes, sir, yes, sir. That's good enough. Go ahead and roll that, uh, 
Ooh, now that's nice. Uh, let me see here. So unarmed for me would be uh, to do 1d4 plus strength. So let me just go ahead and roll a d4. Hmm. Five. Okay. Um, even uh, this, as you're uh, manhandling this creature, uh, it, it definitely does seem like you know, it, it's it's looking hurt. It looks like it's taking damage, but it doesn't seem like it's doing as much as it should. Yeah, no, I'm just looking at it. I'm in pain, but I definitely no, I definitely showed its boss, and that'll be my turn. Okay. Hmm. This fire snake does not like you guys. Uh, you see it uh, kind of gathers itself as it rises up off the ground. It's going to cost half its movement to get back up. Uh, and you see... Hmm, what's... How, how badly does it hate my tool in this moment? Enough. Uh, it it kind of takes note um, of Alardro being there, but being manhandled uh, by this giant orc in the moment was just uh, a little too much for the creature, as it immediately darts back across the room to attack you. Alardro, go ahead and make an attack of opportunity, sir, if you would like to. Of course. Uh, let's see. Um... Oof. Nice. All right. Uh, so you uh, bite um, at the tail as it's kind of darting away, and uh, you feel your jaws kind of tearing through uh, the creature's flesh. Um, you actually feel this intense uh, pain in your mouth as you would, uh, swipe at the creature. Oof. And you uh, actually take six points of damage. From uh, burning your mouth. My tiger has lots of HP. Hmm. That one hurt. Nobody can nobody can lap up milk with a burned tongue. <laughs> okay. Uh, as it gets uh, back up to you, Red Tool, it definitely um, first uh, bites at you. And then it is going to try and lash at you with its tail. Oof. 20 to hit. And with that, I fall. Okay. And it actually lashes at you with its tail as you're falling. So that is going to be one auto fail. Does it still have to hit? Was it 18 hit? 18 hits. Okay. And then as you're falling, it kind of whips its gaze around and it uh, looks right at the closest person. You see it uh, turn its gaze onto you, Brastic. Yin Yang. Who did you say he looked at? You cut out for me. As I scream, Not all! No! He said, hey, look at Raznik or me? Uh, Brasnik? What? Okay. You're looking at me? Uh, you see a Ratul falls and then uh, the snake uh, immediately turns its gaze onto the closest person who is... Oh, okay. So, seeing both... Who I'm going to assume is a larger of the tiger <laughs> and Ratul, when they came into contact with this creature, it seemed to hurt them. Yes. All right, I'll take a step back right over here and throw a dart at the snake. Okay. Nope. Hmm, sadly. Sadly not going to hit. Uh, it uh, sails over its shoulder and kind of clatters off the stone. Anything else for me, sir? 
And, uh... Nope, that'll be it. Okay. Grab back. You're almost there, man. Almost there, I'm gonna run. See him. I'm gonna run in. I'm gonna like gasp, and then I'm gonna cast guiding bolt on. Okay, go for it. Nice. Nineteen. That'll hit. You... All right, so he's gonna take sixteen damage, and then everyone has advantage on hitting him next turn. Next person to attack him. Next person. Okay. You can just make him layer just a little bit brighter. All right. So that uh, guiding bolt, uh, you can tell that that hurt this creature a lot. And it screams out in pain as you come in and you cast this uh, magic at it. And it kind of looks at you, and uh, actually it kind of looks at you in a bit of fear, and you see it kind of looking back towards this crevice, leading towards the lava. Is that the end of your turn, sir? Yes, it is. Okay. At the top of the order, we have a tiger. Uh... I'm going to use the ability of this tiger called Pounce. Okay. I don't... It doesn't automatically trigger, so I'm going to... Sorry. Uh, there's an issue with it. Give me a second. An attempt to I can move back 10 feet and then move forward 20 feet at it and then do the pounce ability. So I make a claw attack and then it must succeed. Um, sorry. Uh, I make a claw attack. Then it must may see, may succeed a DC 13 strength saving throw or be knocked prone. Then, if it's prone, I gotta make a free abide attack as a bonus action. Alright, I'll allow that. Oh. First the attack. Oh. oh. Well, okay. Oh, well, we would have said for advantage, but I think you got advantage enough. Alright, so your claws slash out, they rake through uh, this creature's flesh. Uh, again, oof, damn, you take six points of damage as you feel your paw like burst into flames and you can even feel like your claws kind of melt back and become a bit useless on that paw. Is it still up? Uh, let me roll that strength check. Barely, Jump. barely, barely up. Okay, so that's all I can do. Okay. Krasnik, this thing's looking extremely weak. Definitely looks like it wants to flee. All right, well, just gonna go ahead and just try and finish it. I need some snakeskin boots. I'm not kidding. <laughs> that make Ooh, it. 13. Hmm. Sadly, that is not quite going to be enough to answer. I'll throw my bow away in disgust. <laughs> okay. 
Because if, if you if you remember this entire time, I've been throwing daggers and hammers, and I switched the bow and arrow. It worked a little bit, but now it's now it's failing me. I'm gonna throw away in disgust. <laughs> okay. I knew I should just kept what I knew, <laughs> what I was good at. Stupid ass bow. All uh, right, but um, I really don't want to get burned, and Alondra is in animal form, which I think gives him more health. Yeah, each the 12 damage dealt to me, I still have 20 damage, over 25 now. Yeah, the player knows, the, the character, you know, does it, so. That's pretty much like, you know, Laundra's a tank, I'm gonna move over here. <laughs> okay. That's, that's my turn. Alright. Ricky, buddy. Oh wait, wrong dice. Alright. Nice. Thank goodness that was the wrong dice. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Alright, well that's one for Arky. Ratul, how about you, buddy? Bleh. 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 Yep, I'll go ahead and make my death save now. Okay. Oof. That is two for you. Ratul. Yep, he is coughing up a bit of blood now. And that's it for me. Alright. Let's see. This fire snake is going to try to get away here. So. You see it uh, start slithering back this way. A larger go ahead and make an attack of opportunity if you'd like to. I don't believe that hit. Doesn't hit. Alright. You see it, uh, it starts getting in there. Uh, but it's still kind of working its way through the crevice. You can, it almost seems like this creature has almost outgrown this nest. You can see this thing trying to get away. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'm more or less concerned about my friends than I am. It's a one, two, three, four. I want to grab, I want to scoop Ergie up and try to run away. I'll see you using this engage action. Okay. No. Because I'm just going to take my action to grab him. I don't have any key points left. So I'm just going to scoop him up and try to run away. Okay. And then I still movement, and I still got two more spaces, so I, gra I drag him back to here. Alright, well done, sir. Is that the end of your turn? You can uh, definitely see that um, the tool is looking uh, pretty bad. Yeah, I was gonna yell back to a large room and be like, Drop it and save him! Or, I know, uh, grab it. I know grab it can heal too, can't he? Yes, I was about to. Okay. Okay. Is that the end of your turn? That's it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, grab back. Alright, I'm gonna walk down a little bit. And cast Cure Wounds on Ritual. You have to touch with that one? Nope. Cure Wounds you do, yeah. Cure Wounds is touch. Uh, healing Word is ranged. Oh. suddenly like cough you cough again as blood spurts out of your mouth 
as you open up your eyes and you kind of shake your head and start trying to sit up a little bit, you see Greybeck kind of leaning over you. As he's withdrawing his hand, you see the priestly energy start fading away from his hand. As you kind of look over, you see the fire snake disappearing into this crevice. By the way, that was max health, too. Very helpful. Don't forget. Don't forget you can, you can uh, stabilize creatures without having to use a spell. So. I guess then we need to, we need to stabilize Erky. Let's see. Well, there's going to be one last opportunity for everyone that's above this fire snake. So, a larger. What would you like to do, sir? You see, Red Tool kind of like, but Erky's definitely still down over there. With with like the tiger mind, kind of. With, with him, like, in, like, the beast set of mind, mm -hmm. it, it, him starting a hunt is going to lot, uh, move here and then move 20 more feet, or, yeah, and then attempt to pounce on this thing again. Okay. Hmm. No. Dang, now you're blocking the way. Not quite a hit, sir. Uh, um, okay. Um, I still have, I, what? I'm sorry. What were you going to say? I still have tentative movement, so I'm going to back, back, back up. Okay. Definitely get, uh, as your, your, um, anyone that attacks or touches the creature takes damage. So take another three points of fire damage. Okay, that's fine. Alright, Brasnik. That creature's still within sight? Yeah. From there, it would have, uh, like, quarter cover. Yeah, one to go. One section to dash so I can get through my ally. And pull a dagger. And chuck. Okay. A hit. Seven piercing. Alright. Oh man. This creature. You hear it scream out in pain as the dagger, you can just tell that, you know, it, it's kind of like quivering and slithering, but it's not really moving with intent. It's just desperately trying to get to this lava. One and one for Erky. Red Tool, you are the last hope here, buddy. Let's do this. I get up with half my movement. I come over here. I'm going to grapple its tail. Okay, go ahead and roll with advantage. Take two points of fire damage from grappling a hold of the creature's tail. Yeah, no, and with that holding it, I'm going to do the a similar move I did to Durin. As with that tail now caught, I basically shift my lower stance, clamp my foot down, twist my hips, and pull the thing out of its crevice over my head and slam it on the ground between us. 
Uh, go ahead and roll on another athletics. Or... Straight, right? Yep. Mm. Oh, no. All right. It does seem to be kind of like clawing, uh, or somehow like struggling against you, uh, using all of its slithering might <laughs> to try and evade uh, this thing. I am going to go ahead and roll a contested strength check. So you still have to roll, right? What's up? Does it still have to roll? Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. It is able to uh, kind of hold its place, uh, but you have kept it from escaping. So Actually, I still have 10 feet of movement left. So... I'm going to use that to half movement, drag myself back and drag it out of its hole. Well, I think that contested strength thing was to see if you could get it out of the hole. Okay, fair point. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, so on its check, it is going to try and break free of your grasp. So go ahead and roll another. Uh, Strength or athletics, or I guess this one would really be acrobatics. Oh man, you you just win. <laughs> okay, so it does try to break free of you, but you are able to uh, hold on to the creature. Uh, Yin All right. Um. Uh, he's got that. I'm gonna set Erky down and. I, I guess look at Gryback and be like, you want to get him while I get the snake, or do you got the snake? I'll take care, Ricky. All right, no, five, ten, fifteen. And I guess I can't, can I get right here? Um, or is it too small of a space? I mean, it's going to be difficult terrain, but you could squeeze in there. I go ahead and squeeze my tiny butt next to the right tool, like, okay, and then just kind of like curb stomp the snake's head just <laughs> into the dirt. <laughs> okay. God, we're just beat up on this one snake because he took Erky. Yes. <laughs> nope. I'm just doing 11 hits and then okay. bonus action, try again. Alright. No. Oh, Jesus Christ. So you, you do hit it, but it does seem to be. Uh... Oh, actually, wait, don't you have advantage against a grappled creature? That's true. Yeah, you do. That's true. Grapple does not give you advantage. No, restrain gives advantage. Yeah. Good try, though. If you have the grappler feet, then you would have advantage. Well, that, those are going to be two misses. But... You do take And I guess I was gonna, after that, step back. Eight points of uh, fire damage, sir. Oof. Yeah, that hurt. You said, you said eight? Yes, sir. And then you're gonna try. And... <laughs> and I'm out. Fuck that shit. Uh, Gray back. All right. So to stabilize Erky, not heal him, but stabilize him, just a medicine check. Yeah. And since Do you have I'm a last, kit? uh, no, I don't. Since I'm last on the list, the snake goes bye bye this next turn. No, it's being grappled by a giant orc. Oh, okay. Then let me stabilize Erky. Or not. Uh, yeah. I was going to say roll with disadvantage because you don't have a healer's kit anyway, so that's fine. Do you want me to roll with advantage? No, I was going to say disadvantage. Because I think oh. you have to have a healer's kit to stabilize someone. You Healer's kit, you give you an automatic. You don't. You skip the roll. Oh, okay. If you're training the healer's kit, you just skip the roll. You, should you, don't, have to be, you don't even have to be trained in a healer's kit. Healer's kit, period. 
give it to you, it stabilizes the creature. Yeah, otherwise, you to stabilize the creature, it's a DC 10 medicine. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't take the healer's kit. You gotta remember, like, I'm a cleric of, like, fire and warfare, not heal. You guys do have one in the general loot party. And no excuse being a cleric of fire and war. Even if you're a cleric of fire and war, doesn't mean you can't have first aid. <laughs> have you not have watched me play this character? <laughs> I'm just saying, being a cleric of fire and war, you would think you would have first aid. Nah. Nah. <laughs> He's a forge cleric. He just likes to hit things with hammers. I build weapons and I kill things with it. All right, so um, either way, you do fail to stabilize the timber. Yeah. 21, a hard row. This thing is being very difficult right now. Uh, 21 for what? 21 is the uh, top of the order. It's Eladro's turn. Gotcha. I was trying to figure out where that 21 was, too. Um, can I move here? On, I can't move there, sorry. Um, can I move here and reach it? Uh, yeah. Okay. It's kind of a tight squeeze, but you can get in there. Um, to bite it. All right. Um, we'll say that's a regular attack. Uh, that's gonna hit. So, uh, you are going to take a little bit of damage. Two points. That fire damage. <clears throat> As you kind of come in, you like slink past uh, the legs of the giant orc. As you jump on this creature, you bite down on the back of its neck as you uh, feel more of your fur burning across your chest and, and your neck. Um, you, you feel like a loud <coughs> as you feel the, the neck bones crack and you feel the snake just go stiff, quiver for a second, and then finally go limp in your grasp. I'm going to let out like a, a growl. Okay. The rest of you know the tiger has made its kill. All right, that is a dead fire snake, gentlemen. That's a good fight. I drag the body out to the open. Okay. As you drag the the fire snake out of the hole. Out to here, uh, you can see, um, you know, the the body, the long sinuous body. You can see the glittering scales uh, that are now seem to be slowly fading with their glow. They're still hot to the touch. <clears throat> Does A good fight that ward was. Uh, a larger, go ahead and roll nature. Uh, uh, so this would be me, not the animal. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, um, you guys don't know uh, too much about these creatures. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I was muted. Uh, you guys don't know too much about these creatures. Um, best guess, uh, maybe some sort of a, um, elemental type of creature, so maybe something from an elemental plane. But um, You're cut in and out really badly. Yeah. 
Okay. Can you can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, you, yeah, you guys don't know too much about these creatures. Uh, possibly something uh, from an elemental plane or something like that, but uh, uh, like any in-depth knowledge is, is beyond your, your training. That yeah, thing hurt when you touched it. That wasn't that... That was definitely a tough fight for tool, but that was not a fun one. No. Oh. And I just show up my currently slightly look black and green looking hands. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of limping on my foot because I almost burnt. I mean, I, my feet are blistered. They're, like, they're pretty burnt. It, 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 it almost took. I think you should help uh, Erky. I'm gonna oh, drop right. after all of the kill. After I kill it, I'm gonna drop my animal chain. Brian, I, I move uh, from the safe. Erky, are you okay? He was looking pretty bad in those scales. Yeah, he definitely uh, still seems to be kind of out at the moment. He seems to be Is stabilized. He... Oh, he's stabilized? Um, oh no, I guess uh, nobody did do that yet, did they? Yeah, we yep. still gotta stabilize him or bring him up. Okay, let's give him another roll here. Well, wait, wait, wait. Doesn't Brasnick have the chance to try and stabilize him before his turn? Yeah. There's no harm trying. Can't you do uh, that when you drop your animal form? Is it an action to drop your animal form? It's an action to do that, and I already attacked this turn. Uh, uh, stabilize someone, so I can't do that. I've got a healing potion. I'll down it. I'll give it to Erky. All right. That's my last one. Okay. Go ahead and roll that. Nine. All right. So you see, uh, you kind of force the potion into Erky's mouth, kind of work his mouth a little bit to get him to swallow it slowly as you're, you're pouring it in. And finally, as, as you're finishing the contents of the bottle, you hear <coughs> as he kind of spits out the last dregs of it as he sits up, kind of looks around. Oh, oh, it tried to eat me. Kind of just breathing heavily for a second. Right. Oh, carnivores tend to do. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I, I just said carnival or carnivores tend to do that. Man, then I said, but they didn't. <laughs> oh, did, did, did you guys kill it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, um. He kind of like looks up at you. He says, uh, I, "I never had any doubt," and he just kind of like falls over. <laughs> and I think that's our cue to probably. I think we're all pretty beat at this point. Hmm. As Ratul pulls out a hand axe. Mhm. Mm yeah, I have a feeling I think they'd be worth something. Yeah. What are you gonna do with that hand axe? I'm going to open up this fire snake. Okay. What are you uh, looking for within this uh, fire snake? I want to take out its heart. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll an investigation check. Anyone else that wants to look around this chamber at all, go ahead and do so. Can I attempt to take this again. Wait, Wait, would I have to roll investigation or survival for this? Um, roll, uh, both. Survival is usually the one you do when you're like, uh, uh, like skinning an animal or such. Right, right. Which is what I was 
Yeah, go ahead and uh, actually roll both. Oh, damn. Oh, boy. I had plus five. I still failed. All because Brasnick took that really nice 16. <laughs> um, uh, Red Tool, go ahead and roll the uh, investigation check, too. I'm sorry, what now? Go ahead and roll the investigation check, too. All right, so that was to open it up, and now investigation to see if I can find a heart. Hey, that's pretty good. Okay. So uh, you're uh, able to uh, find uh, the heart on this thing pretty easy. It takes a little bit of digging around. And actually, as you are digging around, uh, you come across this internal organ that actually is still glowing, still hot to the touch, even though the rest of this creature seems to have mostly cooled. There's still something about this organ, and you think that it may be, be it might be what kind of generated the heat within this creature. It's a flame sack without being a... Okay, more accurately, it's a heat sack, maybe. Does this look like the heart, or does this look like something else? This looks like something else. And you do find the heart, and you're able to cut that out and take it as a prize. Oh, no, I'm actually going to go ahead and eat the heart. Oh, okay. It is, it's it is still very warm and very palatable. As the heart juices run down your maw into your gullet as they dribble across your chin. It's a delightful snack. Oh, Ratul, man, come on. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. <laughs> it was a worthy foe. I have to honor it. <laughs> he's kind of just looking at him away. He's like, oh, man, that, that's, that's gruesome. But okay. now finding that interesting thing, even Ratul, with all his mentality, knows this is probably something very special. Could I make a check to see if I can cut this sack out without rupturing or breaking it? Go ahead. Another survival check. Really? Nice. Yeah, uh, you are able to, you actually uh, cut it a little bit further up uh, in the section, uh, far enough away from uh, the organ itself um, that it seems like you might be able to uh, get it into uh, something. It does seem like uh, if you just put it into a sack or even a leather pouch, it may not... Uh, be enough to sustain the thing. It does seem to be giving off some heat still. Okay, so I was able to separate it, and considering the fact that it's probably still boiling hot, and that the rest of it doesn't seem to be burning beside because of it, I'm going to go ahead and cut, actually try to cut out some of its skin to actually make a makeshift sack out of, to actually hold this flame sack in. Okay. So you get to work on that as you're harvesting from this creature. Um, Brasnick, uh, with that 21 investigation, you're kind of poking around this cavern a little bit. Um, as you look into this nest, eventually, um, you see that it does seem to have some sort of a little nook within this nest. And within this little nook, you find uh, two sapphires. Ooh, sweet. Seems to be the beginnings of a horde, possibly. Hmm, I wonder if these things are related to dragons. I don't think snakes normally hoard things. Yeah, I'll grab those sapphires. 
clearly show everyone them before putting them in the pile. These guys look like they might be uh, worth about 50 gold pieces each. Find the bar. Alright, so you do uh, take the time to uh, harvest uh, some of the skin from this creature. Uh, you're able to create a uh, made makeshift uh, sack of sorts out of its skin. You place the uh, glowing or organ uh, within it, tie it shut with some cord. Uh, where are you going to stow this thing? I'm going to have it tied to my belt. Okay. Perfect. Alright, so, uh... You guys... Um, are in this chamber. It actually is, uh, kind of warm in this chamber. Much of the, the citadel has been kind of damp and cold and dreary. Very dark. Um, but this so is, is it hot and humid, or is it just hot? Uh... It's just warm. It's actually not uh, super humid or anything like that in here. Um, and not uh, too hot as long as you don't get too close to the crevice there uh, to be oppressive or anything like that. Might be a good spot to, uh, to have a rest. As if, as I don't know about y'all, but I feel like as long as we take watches, ain't nothing gonna come out of that without somebody seeing it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I, I'm kind I'm kind of beat. That thing burnt the crap out of me. Ow. It was a worthy foe. And I just take another bite out of the heart like an apple. <laughs> okay. We got that. Appreciate that. Kind of just like, ugh. <sighs> All right. I'll take first watch. Okay. Okay, back. Who wants to take a uh, second watch and third watch? I'll take second watch. Okay. I'll take the third watch. All right. So let me do this real quick. For this, I'm going to break out the actual Unreal D&D dice. So. Uh oh. The phone just died. Okay. Uh, so. On that first watch. Yeah, we're, we're wrapping up here real quick. Um, on that first watch, uh, nothing really uh, exciting happens. Uh, Retool, you kind of begrudgingly get up for your second watch. And then uh, as your, your time sort of comes to an end, you uh, go to uh, wake up. Um, a large row and uh, as you do so you kind of uh, reach over to grab him by his shoulder and give him a you know kind of a you know hey, I managed to get back okay you kind of go to give a large row this nudge and as you look down at him, you see these tiny little mushrooms that seem to be growing around him and on him. And as you kind of poke him a little bit, where you poke him, they all just instantly wither and fade away. And then it kind of spreads around him until they all kind of wither and die and turn into nothing. And as Avario kind of blinks his eyes and sits up, 
They're all gone. Okay, what happened now? You might want to sleep next to the heat vent. Uh, Why is he growing mushrooms? What do you What do you mean? He's you very gro growing mushrooms. Oh. I what? The fun guy. They love you. I, I don't know what you're talking about. You were asleep. The glowing I, fungus was on you. I woke you up. They died. You You woke up. Is that strange? Uh, yes, your it's your turn for watch. When you oh, go you're... back to sleep, sleep by vent. Um, and I'll take watch, and I'll try and think back on any time I've ever heard of mushrooms going up people very fast, rapid. Go ahead and roll a nature check. A what? Uh, nature check, sorry. And we're going to be wrapping up here uh, real quick here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good work. Good work. Um, yeah, it definitely doesn't uh, strike any uh, recollection in, in your memory and your training as a druid. Um, definitely something very curious, though. So, as you're, you're watch, you're, you're kind of deep in thought. Um, go ahead and roll a, a perception check. As the rest of the party is snoozing, as you're deep, deep in the memory of your training, you're almost lost in a memory when suddenly you look up and you see a man standing there. And he's looking out at you with these intense blue eyes. And he just stares at you piercingly for a few moments and then suddenly <laughs> disappears into a cloud of spores. And that's where we're going to end off for tonight. Definitely we talked about this. I'm very excited about what is going to be coming here in the next uh, little bit of this adventure. We are getting to a very exciting time uh, in this, and um, I'm ready to have you guys meet what's coming. It's going to be fun. So on that note, thanks to anybody that was watching. I'm so glad to be getting streaming again. Um, I'm excited, and we're going to try and ramp this thing up and get it going more often, hopefully even a couple days a week, uh, as my time might allow, but I, I don't know. I doubt it. But it is fun to... Uh, to get you know a good night in and see what we can do from there uh this has been the fireside tales i'm indigo all of these amazing gentlemen uh, spent their evening uh, with me and with us to hang out and tell stories and and have a good time doing it um, this was a fun battle tonight it was pretty tough with that fire snake um, definitely uh going to be interesting to see what comes of that as well so that being said, uh, we're going to let these gentlemen get off to sleep. It's past midnight for some of these guys. So uh, you guys uh, have a great night and definitely come and see us again next week. Uh, we're going to be streaming every week uh, until we get this thing uh, resolved. And then uh, we'll see what kind of awesomeness goes uh, forward into the future. Um, all of that being said, uh, thanks for hanging out with us. And we will see you next time. Good, day. Good night, everyone. Night, night. all. Bye. Bye.